the year 2000 was a record year in photography worldwide. Record. Record revenues, record profits, record number of print uh, photos. And 12 years later, they were bankrupt. 12 years later. And if anybody had stood up there in 2000 and said, there's this thing called the digital camera, which, by the way, Kodak invented. Yeah, so it's not like they didn't know what was coming. So right. my work, in many ways, over the last decade or so, has been to answer this question. Why do smart people in smart organizations uh, consistently fail to anticipate, let alone lead, market disruptions? So one of the most important things to consider is um, technology cost. So in energy, we have several cost curves for technologies that essentially all of which enable disruptions of energy and transportation. One of them is lithium ion batteries. The other one being solar photovoltaics. And so the concept of technology convergence is very important. It's when several technologies and business model innovation converge at one point in time to enable certain uh, functionality at a certain cost. When you look at mainstream um, projections, say of EVs or solar and whatnot, you see a linear projection. No technology in history, successful technology in history, right, that I know of, has ever been adopted on a linear basis, ever. It gets adopted as an S-curve. The interesting thing about uh, S-curves is not only that they're exponential, but the, it's getting even steeper, meaning that disruptions are happening even more quickly. A huge thing in disruption is business model innovation. In business model innovation, is every bit as disruptive as technology. A little company called Uber, which did not even exist 10 years ago. Uh, actually, they started 2009. Um, and today, their bookings are higher than the whole taxi industry in America. OK? Eight years. Eight years. So whoever is going to tell you that disruptions in transportation cannot happen in 10 years, well, look at Uber. Look at what they've done uh, in less than 10 years. And they're just getting started. They're doubling every year. It's uh, unbelievable. Um, so they're a business model innovation that was enabled by two things, the cloud and smartphones. So essentially, they took advantage of that convergence and disintermediated this very inefficient uh, market Taxes. that there are um, four technologies, five technologies, plus business model innovation that over the next 13 years or so are going to disrupt all of energy and transportation as we know it. And it's going to happen for purely economic reasons. Uh, lithium ion batteries improved by about 14% per year from about 95 to about 2010. 14%, that's the cost curve. Um, and then two new industries came into, and that's what we used for cell phones and laptops and so on. Uh, and then two trillion dollar industries, auto and energy, came into lithium ion. And guess what happened next? It accelerated. So over the next few years, it accelerated to 16% from 2010 to about 2014. Um, and over the last, oh, six years, right now, to our knowledge, there are about 12 mega The factories. cost curve for lithium ion since 2010 to 2016 was 20% per year. So it went down from about $1,000 to about $200. just the cost curve going down. Essentially, you can map out over the next few years, assuming that it's going to continue at that rate, um, what markets it can disrupt. Storage, for instance, on a utility scale on the grid, it's a very inefficient industry. It's built for the peak. We then have storage to essentially compete with that peak, essentially when we needed uh, that summer peak. And you know, in my book, essentially, a 6% asset utilization is a disruption waiting to happen. And in fact, it is starting to happen. And even conventional energy CEOs are saying that by 2020, there may never be another peaker ever built in the US. Uh, peakers are usually natural gas and, and so on. But even now, I mean, this is not 2020. If you look at what happened in California last year, 
there's a huge natural gas leak and so on, the um, Public Utility Commission in California ordered Southern California Edison to put up batteries, essentially for the peak. And Tesla built it in 88 days, okay? 88 days, right? Try that with a nuclear power plant or with a coal <laughs> power plant, 88 days. So the disruption of peakers has already started. Essentially, this is disrupting what otherwise would have been natural gas peakers in California. So companies, uh, for instance, in New York, Connecticut, demand charges, so on a per kilowatt, hour, per kilowatt basis, are up to 50% of the cost of energy. Not what you consume, but demand charges. So what these companies are doing is essentially saying, I'll put up a battery behind the meter, and essentially I will charge you if I save money. If you save money, I want 50%. Talk about a business model innovation. Right? So essentially, they're going to the 7-Elevens of the world and the hotels of the world and saying, I'll put this storage behind the meter um, so that we can store where, when energy is cheap and then you can use it when, it, when it's expensive. Um, and they say that that lowers utility bills by 10 to 50%. Now, this is not efficiency. I mean, these companies are using the exact number of kilowatt hours, but they're using it in a different way. They're storing uh, some of it to use later. Um, so I've done some numbers um, on the cost curve of uh, batteries, and by 2020 or so, uh, it'll cost the average American consumer about a dollar a day, it's actually improving, um, to basically store 24 hours of electricity. A dollar a day, that's 30 bucks a month, right? Um, now, you don't need to store a whole day. You don't need to store 24 hours to disrupt the utility. All you need to store is four to six hours. That's it, right? Because that's the peak. That is the most profitable part of a lot of utilities, the peak, right? Um, so four hours, essentially, are going to cost, oh, 20 cents a day. That's it by 2020. Boom, disruption. Okay, and people are gonna do it because it's gonna be in their best selfish economic interest. They're gonna put up storage because it's gonna save them money, okay? Um, and this is why you see whole islands going solar in months because the cost of solar plus storage is already uh, cheaper than diesel generation, which is what powers most islands. Solar plus storage is already cheaper than, and that's what you see, uh, and you're gonna continue to see a lot of islands go 100%. We're not talking 2050, we're talking now, because it's already cheaper. Um, so batteries are becoming so cheap that essentially, because of economic reasons, everyone, houses, malls, parking spaces, buildings are gonna have storage. And they're gonna have storage because it makes sense just like we have data storage. Imagine a computer without data storage. Well, energy storage is gonna be just like that, just like data storage is to computers, energy storage is gonna be to uh, housing. 